makes truck driving a new outdoor sport. Offering a range of models, gas or diesel, you just cannot beat. S15. Tough trucks are what we're all about. Okay. I think it's fair to say that everybody has an experience with General Motors. If you haven't, you probably need to get from living under a rock. You see, General Motors, for a long time, has been the <laughs> big culprit of platform sharing. And platform sharing isn't necessarily a bad thing. Many manufacturers tend to use them for the sake of cost cutting, in most cases, to make things more efficient when it comes to engineering, design, styling, whatever you want to call it that day. But the bigger question is, is that, how does platform sharing start to become cannibalistic in a sense of nobody's buying the other brand? What's up guys, my name is Chris and welcome to The Breakdown where we talk about everything cars, news and reviews. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're not, as always, welcome back. So this video in particular is about GMC. Now, how did I get from talking about platform sharing to GMC? Just wait, walk with me. So I got to thinking about what it meant to be General Motors in a sense of Chevy. Don't ask me how I got there. Just know that Chrysler is still only selling one vehicle as of right now. But my point is, is that General Motors tends to do a good job of distributing, I don't know, the same thing warmed over several times, reheating nachos, if you will. And so some way, somehow along the different lines, I began to think about GMC. And GMC for a lot of people is a forgotten about brand if you're not into trucks. Now, GMC has been around since the early 1900s, probably surpassing that of General Motors itself before it became an established brand. And at some point or another became the truck division for General Motors, particularly Chevrolet. Now, the thing is, is that GMC is now seen as the premium brand for Chevrolet, even though it is the truck division and the commercial brand for most heavy duty industries. But the real thing is in terms of retailing and in terms of consumers, GMC has fallen behind in terms of quality as well as popularity, even though their sales don't necessarily reflect that. And in this video, I want to talk a little bit about is GMC still necessary? And more importantly, how they're still necessary in this market, even though we have the likes of Chevy, Cadillac, as well as Buick. So with that being said, in this video, we'll be talking about GMC, whether or not it's still necessary and how in fact, they still are relevant to today's market. So with that being said, stick around and stay tuned because you are now watching The Breakdown. Okay, so GMC, <laughs> let's get into it. To be honest, in terms of retail and quite honestly, GM could really give a hot damn about whether or not their retail sales are selling because what's most important for them is commercial fleet sales. Now, GMC and Chevy have been sharing platforms since 1920 and platform sharing is essentially when a brand or two brands use similar products or similar platforms, whatever you wanna call it that day, and are essentially sharing parts. Now we see this with Acura and Honda, we see this with Toyota and Lexus, we see this with Kia and Hyundai, we see this with many other manufacturers, even so much so, Mercedes and some other partnerships they may have, the likelihood of Nissan. But GMC, as of late, has gone down in quality, according to J.D. Power and Associates, because they pretty much have been having complaints from consumers saying that they're not as good as they used to be. Now, during the early 1900s onwards, GMC was their truck division and pretty much was the prominent brand whenever you had anything that was necessary for heavy duty. GMC has made so many different things from heavy duty trucks to buses, to vans, to pickup trucks. And in some cases, only one car, which would be the Chevette, which was only sold in the Argentinian market. But the real thing is, is that as time has gone on from the early 1990s and 80s and 70s, which their biggest selling vehicle for them is the Yukon as well as the Sierra, because basically there are people who want a Chevrolet, but want a nicer Chevrolet, but don't want to be seen in a Chevrolet. And this is probably one of the bigger points about platform sharing is that it gives people the illusion that it's something different, even though cognitively we know it's the same thing. 
And as of late, for probably the last 10 to 15 years, GMC has kind of waned. Now, I'm going to make a few points. I'm not necessarily going to talk sales numbers because it's really not that important, especially being that GMC typically uses commercial vehicle sales over retail sales. And so their retail sales in truth and honesty really aren't as important as such of the likes like Chevy, as well as Buick, as well as Cadillac. There is a reason why GMC has always been kind of the underseen brand. Now, I will say that with the Denali trim line, GMC has very much been top tier in terms of trucks and SUVs, but you also didn't have to pay Cadillac prices. And the other thing is, is that for Cadillac, they oftentimes use either higher, higher content at parts or they use higher content at engines or transmissions or whatever, even though they do share similar parts. So between Buick and between GMC, they're kind of like in between each other where one is the truck premium division and one is the car premium division, even though Buick doesn't even make a sedan anymore. So they've also exited. So it kind of gives some level of redundancy. But the real problem here is that as we've seen GMC over the last 10 to 15 years, it, it would appear that they've gotten a bit lazy. Now, in terms of styling, I'm going to give GMC some credit. They do try to differentiate themselves from Chevy, and Chevy does typically give you a little bit softer, not quite as hard lines, but they still give you enough to remind you that it's a Chevy. GMC, on the other hand, is about the chrome, the glitz, the glam without the Cadillac price. And they tend to offer a few more features, two, a few niceties, you know, some things that you ordinarily would not get in a Chevrolet. But at what point does GMC become just a copycat of Chevrolet? Now, in the last 20 years, from 2005 to 2025, it would appear that the sales have seemed relatively stable, but the culprit is more so that commercial sales, whether it be rental fleets, whether it be businesses, tend to absorb a lot of sales and really inflate those numbers. So we don't necessarily have any true retail numbers. Now, do I think that GMC is still worth buying? I'm going to say yes, there is still a market for GMC, but quite honestly, it does cause a bit of a blurred line for many consumers who are still in the market for a premium truck because they don't necessarily know how to go to a Chevrolet, to a GMC, to a Cadillac, as opposed to just jumping from a Chevrolet to a Cadillac. There's a bit of stick of shock there. In today's world where everything is super expensive, it almost seems counterintuitive, but to keep GMC in the lineup is absolutely necessary. You see, we can't have exclusively luxury and just mass market. There has to be an in-between because there are some people who don't like the cachet of a luxury vehicle. There are some people who don't necessarily want all of the things that come along with owning a luxury vehicle, but they still want some really nice things in their vehicle. And GMC, like Buick, offer those things. And I always wondered why it was always a Buick Pontiac GMC lineup. And I didn't realize that all of those different brands under one house, which would be the dealership at the time, would have been to give you different functions for the same brand under the GM nameplate. In terms of today's world, I do think that GMC kind of serves as more of an experimental phase for General Motors because even with the Hummer EV, and GM only offers GMC five different vehicles, two of them are EVs, the other three are just normal things like the Sierra, the Canyon, and the Arcadia, and I think the terrain as well. But I say all of those things to say is that, you know, they are kind of in the zombie state, so to speak, with Chrysler, but the difference is their fan base is much more loyal than that of Chrysler. Dodge aside, because Dodge has its own different division, but Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge under the Stellantis brand, Chrysler is kind of the zombie, and in the same case for General Motors, it would start to show that even Buick is beginning to outpace popularity, as opposed to people oftentimes forget about GMC. The real problem that comes in with GMC is, is that at what point do people stop paying for these premium features? Nowadays, cars have so many technological innovations. They have so many different functions. Like even right now, I have a Civic and it pretty much does a lot of things a lot of luxury cars do now. And so I was thinking in the car, at what point do we stop paying for premium features 
and is it still necessary? And GMC is one of those vehicles that I really thought about of, are people still gonna buy that? Now, as far as generations go, that does play into a role of how they're able to still sell. I'm going to be honest, there's a lot of nostalgia packed in between a lot of GM products as well as Ford products and even some Chrysler products. And you guys really enjoyed a few of my videos, especially the one about Pontiac. But the real point is, is that as the incoming generation, Generation Alpha comes in, I don't know if they're going to be anywhere interested in anybody's GMC with the exception of it's pretty affordable. But there's still hope. And GMC has been around for over a hundred years. And so they kind of have the formula down pack and the platform sharing is what saves them honestly, because it costs next to nothing to produce these vehicles because quite frankly, most of them are over at Chevy. And if you want something just a little bit nicer, it's some GMCs over there, I guess. But I say all that to say is that GMC is absolutely necessary for today's market, but it may not necessarily be a thing in the future and that's what we've got to watch but you guys let me know in the comments below whether or not that is something that you think that will happen whether or not gmc will survive over the next 20 years or if it's just me being cynical and speculative because i tend to be those things but thank you for sticking around to the end of the video i really appreciate it leave me a comment subscribe below if you're interested and until the next video i will see you guys later